We use pipeline functions extensively, and whilst we like all the benefits they come, we find them to be slower than their SQL counterparts. Namely, even if we just take a SQL statement and wrap it into a pipeline function, it runs a lot slower. You know, is this a limitation of pipeline functions? So my first thoughts on this, I have to admit, were someone's just writing bad code. A SQL statement by obviously by definition does array fetching. Typically, if you just do select star, it runs you know, nice and simply get the array fetching of your client. My expectation was maybe they're coding out their pipeline functions, doing single row fetches at a time. It's a common mistake and therefore it's just and their implementation was causing the slowdown. But I was actually wrong. Let's actually have a look at what the cause was and how we fix it. So I'm going to start off with a simple pipeline function. I've got a record called my rec and it's got 10 columns. And I'm going to have, because a pipeline function returns a nested table structure, I'll have my list, which is just a table of my records. 10 simple columns. And let's make this, this package very, very simple. The cursor is just select 10 nulls from dual. So if I've got 10 columns, I'll just select null from dual. That's about the smallest and, and most compact cursor I could probably write. I'm going to eliminate array fetching from the issue by simply going open the cursor fetch pipe. So we're done. So there's no array fetching issues here. It's simply it's a one row cursor always pipe that row back. And if I run it, it runs fine. And this was my first response. I said, look, I think I think this is rubbish. I think pipeline functions are just fine. They came back and they said, well, our queries are a lot more complicated. And so I replicated that same package now, this time with 100 columns in my record. The package spec is the same. It's still just 100 fetches or 100 nulls fetched from Joule. If I scroll down again, right? So it's not really, it's just more columns. I ran this one and that sort of piqued my interest a bit. It wasn't instantaneous. It was about 0.8 of a second. Now that's fast, but that is insanely slow for a one row fetch. That's ridiculous. A one row fetch, you know, from a one row table with dual should be instantaneous always. So I thought, let's take this a little bit further. So rather than write one, I thought I'll write some PL SQL to write me some PL SQL. So I've got two clubs here, the package spec and the package body. The package body starts like this. And what I'm doing is I'm actually building the package spec and the package body in PL SQL. So you can see I'm doing 150 rather than 100 this time, column one to 150 and 150 nulls in the fetch. So we go through and then we build it up, we add to our package body, and then finally we execute immediately the spec and the body. So this is actually just building on the fly a bigger version of that. And just to prove it to you, if I look at just the spec for that, you can see it's just now, in this case, it was a record of, what? how many did I do? I did 150, yeah, 150 columns. And the package body looks the same. It's just got the 150 nulls fetched from Joule. Then I ran that one, four and a half seconds. And that's when things started to get a bit weird because 10 columns, instant. 100 columns, 0.8 of a second. 150 columns, four seconds, even though it's just a one row fetch. So then I built a little test harness. So I'm doing iterations from 10 to 40. Each iteration gets multiplied by 10. So from 10 to 40, I'm gonna do 10 times 10, which I'm doing a test at 100, then a test at 110, a test at 120, 130, 140, up to 400 columns. And with each one, I'll see how long it takes to run. Now, I'm not gonna run them because you can imagine how long they start to go. So let's go back to the slides and I'll show you the results. This is how long it took. You can see there's this exponential decay because we had 100 was about a second, but as we got up to 150, 160, out to 350, it was taking 10 minutes plus, almost 15 minutes to do a single row fetch from Joule. There's a bit of a drama with pipeline functions when the number of columns gets massive. So what's the solution? Not too difficult. When pipeline functions first came out in PIL SQL, you had to define object types to utilize them. It was a later addition to PIL SQL that would let you just define the types directly inside the package spec like you just saw. It used to be the case that you had to do them like this define an object type called my record 
and then define an object type again on nested table type of my list. But they were independent SQL types that sat in the database. Then your spec didn't have any types defined itself. It would simply have your function and the body would have your same fetch from Joule. If I run that, it's instantaneous. Now, that's only 10 columns. The other one was instantaneous as well. So let's build up our example again, this time going up to, right? A hundred columns, what I got? Yeah, a hundred columns in there. Build that up. Now let's run it with a hundred columns and it's also instantaneous. That gives us a lot more confidence. So now I'm going to redo that full benchmark, the one that ran for 15 minutes plus. So I'm doing 10 iterations. I'll just do 10 iterations. Each iteration will be a multiplier of 40. So the first one will be 40 columns, the next one will be 80 columns, the next one will be 120 columns, 160 columns, all up to 400 columns, which almost never came back in my previous example. So there's our stuff, we run it. It took three seconds to run all the tests, and if I go look at the timings that I captured throughout that, you can see for 40 columns, instantaneous. For 200 columns, almost instantaneous. In fact, up to 400 columns were still at 0.3 of a second. That's the kind of degradation I'll expect simply in terms of the volume of code I'm actually con compiling and interpreting at runtime. The solution here really is use SQL types. That's how pipeline functions were first put together and they work fine. It's obviously some sort of bug in the issue of declaring those types directly in the package spec that's this causing that dramatic slowdown. However, in 20C onwards, that's obviously been recognized because I tried this on 20C and it works no matter what you do. So once you get to the later versions, it's solved, but obviously a lot of us won't be going to 20C for a long time. So I put this in here because then you would actually see that we are at the point where if you define your own SQL types, you'll have spectacular pipeline function performance.